If you're hearing this episode around the time it comes out, it means I'm taking some time off after the birth of my son. I've recorded these ahead of time and will most likely not be available on social media for the next few weeks, but you can still get the story behind twice a week if you're subscribed to the podcast. Consider this series to be like a substitute teacher. We won't go as in-depth as in previous episodes, but we'll briefly touch on a number of different topics in each show. The series focuses on Billy Joel's song, We Didn't Start the Fire, and the headline-making events and people he mentions. Some content may not be suitable for all listeners. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind We Didn't Start the Fire, 1955 to 1956. Albert Einstein was born in Germany and showed an interest in music, math, and science early on. One commonly held belief about Einstein was that he failed math in school, but in fact, he excelled at it, to the point where his parents bought him advanced textbooks for him to learn more math over his summer vacations. While he made his living as a patent clerk, he spent time writing scientific papers examining physics. His third paper was on his theory of relativity, which gained him worldwide acclaim, and the fourth described the equation energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, or E equals mc squared. That theory would end up becoming a key element in developing the atomic bomb in the 1930s. He died of an aortic aneurysm in 1955. James Dean became iconic for his representation of the youth counterculture movement in Rebel Without a Cause, But he also became iconic for his premature death in a car accident following the completion of his third and last film, Giant, in 1955. But he remains a cultural icon, especially of the decade in which he's most associated with. He didn't portray the bubblegum-popping, saccharine teenager typical of the 50s, but the pompadour-haired, white t-shirt and leather jacket-wearing, misunderstood, anti-authority teenager instead. A stereotype teenager has found themselves relating to easily, and therefore cementing his legacy when he died. Humphrey Bogart is quoted with saying, if he had lived, he'd never have been able to live up to his publicity. Brooklyn's Got a Winning Team refers to the World Series of 1955, which saw the Brooklyn Dodgers play the New York Yankees. The Dodgers had a reputation for losing five previous series to the Yankees in 1941, 47, 49, 52, and 53. And when they lost the first two games, fans assumed they would continue the pattern. But after winning the next three games, it looked like they might have a chance. After a Yankees win in the sixth game, the championships came down to a tie-breaking seventh game. Dodgers pitcher Johnny Padres won MVP for pitching the shutout, giving the Dodgers their first World Series title and only title in Brooklyn before moving to Los Angeles in 1957. Davy Crockett came to the spotlight in 1955 in Walt Disney's television show Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. Fess Parker's portrayal of the character was a hit among school-age boys across the country, inspiring them to even don coonskin caps. The show was so popular, the U.S. military named a tactical nuclear recoilless gun the M-29 Davy Crockett, most likely inspired by the television show. It's incorrectly assumed when Billy Joel mentions Peter Pan in his song, it refers to the Disney animated movie, but that came out in 1953, and this part of the song is mostly talking about 1955 references. This Peter Pan was most likely the Broadway musical starring Mary Martin and Cyril Richard, who both won Tony Awards in 1955 for their roles. When Elvis Presley came along in the mid-50s, During a decade known for its family values and mainstream conservative views, he made leaders and parents nervous with his rock and roll and hip shaking. Combining blues, gospel, and country, he became known as the king of rock and roll and became one of the most popular musical artists of all time. When Walt Disney bought 160 acres of orange groves in Anaheim, California, he had an idea for an amusement park to appeal to children and adults alike and in 1955, Disneyland opened to the public. Today, Disneyland sees at least 18 million visitors every year. French dancer, model, and actress Brigitte Bordeaux was shot to stardom after appearing in And God Created Woman, playing a sensual young woman in Saint Tropez, and she became internationally famous for her on-screen and off-screen sensuality. She retired from acting in 1970. 
On October 23, 1956, a student demonstration in Budapest, Hungary, protesting Soviet control of the country, sparked what became known as the Hungarian Revolution, or Hungarian Uprising of 1956. Students marched to the parliament building, and as news spread, more joined the demonstration, and the state security police began firing on the crowds. In a lot of segregated areas of the United States, including Alabama, racial tension was beginning to come to a head. And when Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a bus and move to the colored section, it led to her arrest and the incident was seen as the catalyst to the civil rights movement. The Supreme Court ruled in November 1956 that segregation on transportation was unconstitutional. Following the death of Joseph Stalin in 1953, it would take several years before a new leader would take over the helm of the Soviet Union. Nikita Khrushchev, who had originally been given power under Stalin, began denouncing Stalin's methods and purges in 1956, and he helped to initiate a less oppressive Soviet Union. He became premier from 1958 to 1974. Grace Kelly, glamorous movie star known for starring in such classics as Dial M for Murder and The Country Girl, was one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood when she met and was wooed by Prince Rainier III of Monaco, and she left acting to marry him, becoming Princess Grace of Monaco in 1956. The novel Peyton Place was considered scandalous and outrageous when it came out in the straight-laced era of the 50s, but it became a number one bestseller. It was the Fifty Shades of Grey of the Eisenhower era, and it dealt with taboo subjects ranging from unwed mothers to incest to homosexuality. One in 29 Americans were said to have purchased the book, and teens would mark the more graphic parts of the novel and pass it around among one another. Trouble in the Suez refers to Israeli forces invading Egypt when General Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal. The Israelis were joined by the British and French forces, and the Soviet Union was nearly brought in as well. The United States, however, put pressure on the invaders to leave Egypt, and a UN emergency force was established following the withdrawal of troops by early 1957. Thanks for listening to The Story Behind. In the next episode, we'll explore the years of 1957 through 1958, as referenced in Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. For more information, visit thestorybehindpodcast.com. And you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at StoryBehindPod. But I can't promise many updates since I'm currently on baby break. But be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.